everyone. Welcome to the ELCS postgame lobby after the first week of the playoffs. I'm Shocks, joined by Cold, but fear not. We will be joined by both the Fischio and Gilius throughout this postgame lobby, but uh, they're making their way from the stage down. Here after what was an incredible series, Cold, Vitality in the end came out on top. A thrilling five-game series. Unbelievable. One of the most exciting series we've seen in a while. Definitely. And one of the most close series we've seen in a while. Um, what a series. I think this is kind of the series I was looking for uh, when I initially saw the, saw the matchup. And I think this series was just so back and forth and it was really hard to see who, who would come out ahead. But I think um, from what I've seen in the first couple of games, I'm happy that Vitality actually won the series because I think they have a better shot at challenging Fnatic in the semis. Well, we'll talk a bit about that later, but can you tell me what it came down to in the end in that final game? What was the winning factor for I Vitality? Mean, it seemed like both teams just want to brawl it out at the end, <laughs> yeah. like fights back and forth all the time. But I think the kind of unsung hero in, in the series overall was actually Gilius because I felt like he was he was the guy that actually had the upper hand in terms of the jungle matchup uh, throughout the series. Uh, not in like specific games, uh -huh. but throughout. I, f I felt in like the early he, was, game specifically. he was just outperforming, Sugar. outperforming Shug in majority of the games, and I think he was a huge part of why Vitality won today. Yeah, in the meantime, the Fischos join us as well. Can you Hi tell guys. us Hello. what did it come down to in game five? Ooh, what did it come down to? Um, I think one team had Ash, and another team yeah, had Yeah, what was up with that That's Ash? True. Uh, that one surprised me for sure. Uh, I definitely didn't expect the last pick and ban phase from Mage 2K. I don't think that's a, the reason they lost. No. Um, they, like, going to 20 minutes, it was dead even. And I was like, okay, this is going to go late game again. It's going to be a lot of play around Baron. We don't know if Vitality can execute there. But then it kind of felt like HK got so greedy for fights that, like, the dragon fight they jump into is, like, they don't have Selfie coming down in time. They end up having to engage from one side with Smitty J. And then suddenly, everything's just kind of messed up. And Mini Trupax is just sitting there being like, bam, 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 bam. Well, Mini Trupax in that was also the player of the series in the end. And I feel like he snuck up in that last game because he was always there. He's always doing his job. But it is in that last game on Tristana that he really just brought it home when he had to. 40% of the votes for him. So nice closure for uh, the Portuguese point. I mean, happy for him. We talked a lot about the other AD carry today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. but Only. <laughs> he shut us up, you know? So I think he is a player that relies a lot on, on confidence, and I think he got a lot of confidence today. And I'm, I'm excited to see how he's going to do against Fnatic. And it's so fantastic to watch, you know, the player camps and then also seeing the Vitality players after they win because they are this emotional team. So mm -hmm. when they are doing well and they get the big wins, you just see them go crazy. And that kind of momentum is so huge. Also, I think for a guy like Mini Trupex, who really wants to show everyone that he should be the AD carry well, you talk about every I think time. he's very happy. I'm going to cut you off because we have Jizuke and Mini Trupex standing by for a winner interview with Medic, so take it away. Thank you very much, Shox. I am joined by Mini Trupax and Jazuke. Congratulations on your win. Coming into that series, I think a lot of people would have said that you should have won it a bit quicker, maybe in three games, maybe in four. Did you guys expect it to go all the way to five? Yeah, this is a scripted. We always go to game five, so the rookie team gets more experience yeah. because we have to play Fnatic. Yeah. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So you're saying you're not good enough at the moment to play Fnatic and you need more games on the stage. <laughs> I'm saying we're not experienced enough. Like, uh, obviously they, they played some good games, but I, uh, I feel like we could have ended way, way more games than what we did. Like, yeah. for example, second game, we were always ahead only in the fourth game that we entered the beat, bot lane. But besides that, we were always ahead early game and we could have finished. Well, they're definitely entertaining games to watch, uh, to say the least. Jizuke, that mid lane battle seems to go one way and the other. Sometimes Selfie would have the upper hand, sometimes you would have the upper hand. What do you think defined which one of you would come out on top in the end? I mean, I think I had the upper hand uh, four out of five games. So, I don't know. Like only the Vladimir game, we had the mid-prior contested. The other four games had the mid-prior game and I was roaming. So, uh, I don't know. I think I, I won pretty hard. Okay, because you're playing up against Caps next week as well. Do you think you can have the same performance against him, or is it going to be harder than Caps. against Selfie? Caps? Yeah, it'll be Caps. I mean, of course it's going to be harder. He's, uh, <coughs> his whole playstyle is on mechanics, and uh, my playstyle is on mechanics as well. And I have a lot of fun when we scream each other, because we just, uh, you know, just rely on mechanics, and uh, whoever gets mid-prior snowballs the game. So uh, I like playing against Caps. I'm looking good. forward to it. 
Okay, it's going to be a good semi-final. Uh, Mini Trupax, you'll be up against Reckless in the lane. Now, there's been a lot of talk about who the best, you know, rookie AD carry is in Europe. People have talked about Sheriff, people have talked about Upset. You're the only one left standing. And Reckless has said in the Euphoria podcast that he's actually scared of playing against you because when he plays against you in solo queue, he learns a lot. Do you think that you can get the upper hand in that matchup against who many people think is the, the best AD carry in Europe? I mean, it will be silly that... Uh that I say that I will win easy, right? But I guess that if I just take it easy on myself, that if I don't let the pressure go into me, if I have this experience on best of fives, I think uh, I can actually match some games. And actually, we we have two games against Fnatic in regular split, and we did really well against them. It's it's still hard, of course, but I think we, we can do fine, more than fine. Okay, so with a week to prepare, that's my final question, guys. You're playing up against Fnatic. What do you think your chances are of getting all the way to the finals in Copenhagen? Do you think you can take down Fnatic? First to you and then to you. It's always 50-50. But I will say that it's going to be a long series because I think our team is actually the best team early game. I think like even in the regular split when Fnatic were like at a high level, we snowballed early game. So yeah. I think our team is really good early game and we just are like, you know, those little five kids that really want to play and there are rookies and they are like, oh, all right, let's go, not sure. <laughs> hey, no preparation, you know? So we, we normally throw there, but when we don't throw, we actually play really good League of Legends because we always manage to get early advantages. So I think if we actually snowball early game, even though they have more experienced players, we can perfectly win. And I will say like, it's going to be a long series for sure. And I don't know, probably three two. Chizuke, what are your thoughts about the matchup? Um, I agree with Mini. We're uh, really good early game. And the, the two games that we played against Fnatic, uh, we won both early games really hard. And uh, we only lost the second game because they had more experience than us. And they were like, they play mid late game really good. They were trapping, uh, using pressure from nowhere, stuff like this. But I think uh, it should have been a 2 0 in the regular split. And I think if we win early and uh, snowboard properly, not throwing, playing our game, I think we can win as much as uh, they can win. They have uh, really good learners. Like uh, playing against Caps is not playing like, uh, I don't know, uh, whoever, uh, you know? <laughs> like, <Sorry. laughs> like uh, it will be a bit harder to get advantage in mid. And uh, both they have uh, one of the best bottlings in the LCS. Top is same, jungle is same. So I think if uh, we can win early and uh, they can play really good as well. So it will be 50 50. All right, well, it's going to be a great series to watch. Congratulations again on your win today, guys. Taking it all the way to five games really got my heart pounding. So well done. We'll see you in the semi finals next week and we'll see you in Copenhagen, whether it be the third place match or the finals. Congratulations Thank on you. that as Thank well. You. We're going to hand it back across towards the post game right. lobby. Shocks, take it away. Thank you very much. Wonderful interview, both guys. Super, super happy. And another happy member of Victoria's Vitality, God Gilius himself. Congratulations, man. That was an incredible series to watch. Yeah. Probably stressful to play. How do you feel about closing it out in the end? It was a roller coaster, I would say. After game one, we had we were really happy and excited. After game two, we just wanted the series to end ASAP. <laughs> and uh, yeah, in the end, I'm really happy. Obviously. What was the hardest? Was it after game two that you felt the deepest and was the hardest to come back from? Yeah, game two, I just felt like it was such a free win. And then we just mess up so hard in the mid game. And I think uh, some players in the team showed a lot of frustration, which also got to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just talked about it. Don't show emotions in game and just move on and then yeah, we do bounce you, back. Do you think you killed a lot of your demons because you had the Baron shenanigans in game two oh. as well, but then you overcame it. Yeah. You had some emotions, but you overcame it. You came back from a game down and match point. It feels like you made a lot of progress in the series. Uh, <laughs> not not too much, <laughs> but um, yeah, the 50-50 the smite definitely felt good. Um, what's and going I, I got on with some, your barons? Some what's trundle going practice on? going. So. Yeah. There you go, good trundle. We gotta ask, what's going on with your barons? With my barons? Yeah. It's actually today, again, I didn't even look at the amount of damage Smite does. <laughs> I actually just go with the flow, you know? Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Feeling. I think we figured out why. That might be an issue. Stolen. To be fair, yeah. I think the Baron steal that happened in... That was game two, right? Mm -hmm. Game three I stole it, I think. In game three, you got it. And then when they stole it in game two, oh. technically you guys had already called to back away and then Jizuka keeps hitting the Baron. And then I think Shook 
got in. But there was such a psychopath move from Shuk. Yeah. He goes over <laughs> yeah. and punches the Nash 1v5. Yeah. <laughs> I Shuk didn't did it expect a few that. Times. Yeah. It worked once and it definitely backfired in game two. Yeah. Shuk was or game three. It. Uh, what do you think, if you look at the five games, did it come down to? Why did you win today? Um. Just overall, I think the, the champions we play are, are better. Like um, They have really a low amount of weapons in their drafts. They're really predictable uh, in, in what bands they do and what, what they pick. So yeah, I think champion pool-wise, we were ahead of them. And just early games were always in our favor. So we mm -hmm. have the better mid laner and better jungler. So <laughs> There we go. I, I actually agree a lot with Gilius that it felt to me like it was more vitality to actually lose the game than Haze 2K to win it. And then I think, to be honest, the the jungle matchup was just so favorite for Gilius. Like, I felt like Shuk was just not doing anything in the games. Like uh, he. Could have done way more, in my opinion, um, but it, it seemed like you had his the overhand. I don't know how it felt in game, um, but it probably felt that way. It, just just judging from how it looked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt that way. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't want to say too much yet. We're just getting started. Let's take a look at the bracket because Vitality they're moving on to the semifinals where they're facing Fnatic. Uh, unfortunate for H2K, they fought like lions over the entire split. If you show and then in this best of five, but this is where the road ends for them. Yeah, I think sadly for them, they're gonna like they're gonna be very happy they made playoffs after being one and seven, but they're gonna be very unhappy after this series because a lot of things that happened in game were extremely questionable calls on their side that ended up losing them when they actually had finally managed to get back in certain games, like game three. The whole play around Baron there where they Shook ends up like all inning forward, instead of just backing away and actually just waiting for the next team. Fight. I think the bigger dis disappointment there for me was that. Uh, Smitty J was in the in the pit for like That's 15 another one. seconds. That's where another he just one. Took free damage and he, they couldn't team fight after. Where yeah. they're actually stronger in the team fight, they can just take the fight. But they're just chilling in the pit, taking free damage. And I, I was that was really questionable. There's gonna be a lot of regrettable moments for them where it felt like they were a little bit too eager. Mm -hmm. And Vitality, when we got those kind of fights, felt much more in control. Also in the last game, which yeah. was the big swing, like. It all starts at that dragon fight. They win it with three kills after actually just being even at that point. And after then, Shook tries to defend his mid lane turret and hoping he gets devoured, but he jumps too far away from his time. Kench, they, they kill him, and suddenly, Vitality do not have to play around Baron like we normally see. They don't have to risk losing a Baron, <laughs> and they can actually get it for free, and then they're really good with it. So those are like small moments in a game that ended up being huge for the last game. So overall, we can say that Vitality was better at keeping their cool in the important moments. Definitely felt like yeah. that. Okay. Uh, Gilius, before we move on, these two guys ha had no faith in you uh, yesterday yeah, in the post actually. lobby. Is there anything you just want to get off your chest? I was, <laughs> this is yeah, your time to I, roast I, us. I was really angry yesterday, uh -huh. actually, watching the <laughs> post game lobby. The, the post -game lobby. <laughs> like, when, when I hear that Kazing is saying that their bot lane is also better than ours, and then... You put it all on Kissing now. You no, like overall, that everyone just uh, doubted us. And I mean, today we kind of proved your point that we're not that good because we dropped two games. But uh, in the end, it should. I expected a 3-0. That's why I was so mad yesterday. But now I'm not that mad. Okay. There we go. Almost a 3-2. Yeah. Just on the other yeah. side. So he was so mad that he played worse, which made it into five games. So it's actually our it fault. Once. Yeah, it's your fault. Mm. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yeah. All right, Sorry. But <laughs> you still made it into the semifinal, which is huge. Let's take a look at both semifinals. Let's start with G2 versus Splice. Splice, fantastic effort over Rocket yesterday, looking incredibly clean. So, Gilius, I want to ask you first, what do you think of this matchup? Is this a close one, G2 versus Splice? Oh, uh, yeah, really close, actually. Um, I, I really don't know who's going to win it. So, uh, yeah. But I, I think we, we should not overestimate Splice from yesterday. I think Rocket is, was in a big slump uh, mm -hmm. coming into playoffs. Um, just from practicing against them, mm -hmm. I know it. Uh, so yeah, G2 in best of fives, that's also an interesting one. We have never seen this squad in a B of five. So yeah, awesome. I'm not sure. What do you make of Xerxes versus Jankos, the best performing jungler? Now yeah. versus Jankos, who's also been pretty good. Yeah, Jankos tends to choke when it <laughs> when it matters, so that might come back. Um, Xerxes is looking fantastic at the moment, so yeah, I, I think Xerxes has the upper hand. I think yeah, the Jankos choking one is kind of outdated a little bit. I actually he didn't like do it last year. I feel like last year he was actually playing completely fine in, in playoffs and when games matter. So I think he developed in terms of like experience. So I don't I don't think that's a problem at all. The the one guy I'm looking at is Perks. I okay. think 
he as a guy who oh, he's always showing up in the big games. I think he always performs well when it matters. That's why a lot of people call him one of the great players we have here, here in Europe. And I, I'm looking a lot on him to be able to pull it for G2. Well, the question is then, you have a Perks on G2 with all the squad around them, but on Splice, you have a Kabi who's been in many of those situations. You have an Oduwamne who's been around the world and back and played everywhere. You have a Kasing who has a decent amount of experience as well. So it might be a non-factor, the experience on stage. Yeah, I mean, the experience is going to be even uh, between them. Obviously, on the side of Splice, it's not like their players have made a ton of finals and lifted a ton of trophies. And the they same made the final? And, I mean, they made a final they and then they Worlds. lost, you know, <laughs> and then they went to Worlds and they lost. I'm just saying, like, Kobe in itself, yes, he does have experience in playoffs, but it's not like he has shown a clutch factor or something that we've seen from other AD carries. Mm -hmm. uh, I think with G2, obviously Perks have been there multiple times now, but the other four members not been the same. Either Yankos or Omni will make the final and either one of them will have a chance to lift the trophy, even though they're going to be most likely, sorry, against Fnatic, which could be the tough one. But let's see what happens in that other semifinal first. Yeah, we'll see. I feel like we ask this every split. Is this G2? Is this the most beatable G2 we've seen so far? I mean, and here you got to say it again, right? Yeah, for sure. Just because how strong Splice look and how... Not that G2 was looking really good in that tiebreaker game. This is the rematch of that, by the way. Mm -hmm. But you don't feel like they're on their top form. I mean, in the past, they had Sven and Miffy, and we... We have to we have to like talk about them because they were so crucial and they're prepped for the best of fives and how they control the pace. They always show up in big games and I think this right this way around is going to be a weaker G2. But I still think against Splice it should be a game where it's, it can really go either way and it's about the the players stepping up when it matters. I also think it's a G2 despite having a weaker bot lane will have a stronger top lane. And Wonder. I think we have seen in this top lane meta, you can either go tanks, like some teams like to do, or you can do what, let's say, Odamna tried to do yesterday, or what Smitty J did in the first two games. Like, you lock in things like Camille, you lock in different carry tops, and you can try and play around the lane, and it can be very effective. It will be the go-to strategy for G2, um, from what we have seen all split long. And I'm, I'm, I really want to see Odamna wonder, specifically. Could become one of the most important matchups, or they both get... Dog champs, and then it's all about <laughs> the mid and bot lane in this uh, best of five. We'll see. Wonder is another one of your ex teammates. That's uh, Are you impressed by kind of his development? Because he's always been a good top laner, but n I feel like never really is dominating straight up as the split. Yeah, so I always knew he was a very good player uh, just based off the knowledge he has. And he is always a guy that is very vocal about what he wants to happen in game. And that was also why. When we played on Splice back in the day, when I played on the team back in the day, we played a lot around him and we did that for a reason because we knew that if we give him the ability to snowball, he can take over games. And so I always knew he was a good player. I think the environment we had in the Splice team back then was just not very good for us playing well as a team because mm -hmm. we actually, in my opinion, didn't have that much knowledge about how to play the game. Um, so yeah, it's. I always knew he was good, but uh, not at the level he's playing at right now. Yeah, very interesting semi-final. Anything you guys want to add about Splice versus G2, or do you want to move on? Five games. Five games, please. We're in the mood now for it, so <laughs> let's keep it going. And then our second, second, uh, second, second semi-final. Fnatic versus Vitality. So, Vitality just won five games. Fnatic has had a week to look at Vitality, to look at all the possible opponents coming into this one and find themselves on Saturday versus Vitality in that best of five. Gilius, first thoughts going into that match. Is Fnatic how much better than... Vitality is Fnatic. Uh, I, I'm not scared at all, actually. Uh, whenever we face Fnatic, we match up really well against them. Uh, I think the jungle difference overwhelms them every single time. <laughs> and yeah, I, I think uh, Mini Troopers. About the jungle matchup? I mean, Broxa, whenever I face this guy, even if it's solo queue or scrims, it, he falls short and it's going to happen again. So I, I know that he's like shaking in his boots right now sitting on the sofa watching this and uh, next week we will beat them, yeah? Here's the good thing for Broxa though, even if he's scared, he just looks to his right and he sees Reckless, he looks to his left and he sees Cap, and he's probably pretty calm now. Then he sees Vitality Barons and he's like, we're definitely getting to late game. <laughs> and then you have Caps and Reckless and that has been the best late game so far we've seen from any team in the EU LCS. Uh, I think if Vitality over this week can actually clean up that mid game and especially around Baron, they're going to have a good chance because they can win the early games. We've seen that multiple times. They can shut down a mid laner for sure. They just cannot afford to lose it at Baron then. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem I see for Vitality is the fact that 
today I felt like they were not really getting ch challenged in the early game, only the, the game four specifically. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Fnatic as a team has developed in terms of showing more early game comps, um, especially with the Talia and stuff like this. So I've. I'm a bit worried if, if Fnatic is going to start taking over the early game, how Vitality is going to react to this in the mid game, because I, today it, they looks, you guys looked a little bit lost in the fourth, fourth game when you fell behind. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of interesting matchup. I think early game is going to be super crucial in, in this matchup. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I feel like it might not be one team or the other getting ahead, but it might just be very close and a lot of brawls in the early game, or just very sure. calm, which makes you go into the mid game on an even token. And then I'm inclined to say, the quality of Reckless of Caps is just through the roof. Let's start with the mid lane. Do we think that Jizuke can match Caps in a yes. game like this? Yes. What are the similarities and where are the strong points for each or the other? I think they're mechanically very gifted, both players. They also understand when they can play aggressive most of the time. Caps have shown a little bit of a weakness there. <laughs> uh, if the enemy jungle is around him a lot. I think he's gotten better at least at that. And actually the only team who's really successfully shot him down. Gilius and yep. Vitality. Uh, so that's going to be super interesting to, to follow because the mid jungle synergy for Fnatic is not good. And it might, it's not going to be 1v1 mid, it's going to be 2v1 most of the time. And that advantage I give to Vitality. Vitality uh, in the bottom lane, mini true packs versus Reckless. Reckless playing out of his mind. Mini true packs, very steady player so far for Vitality as well. And when you talk about emotion and reaction to games, I feel like Mini Trufax is one of the guys that really has his heart and soul yeah. in every single game. Um, how has he done in this best of five, and how do you think his emotions will do in that best of five? Um, I don't know. It's it's hard for me, actually. Like, in, in practice, he's an ice-cold guy. He doesn't really... He's always um, focusing on just improving, doesn't care about win or lose. But when we go on stage, the emotions really get to him. Um, I don't know, I think he had a great series today. He played really, mm -hmm. really well. Uh, he's always a player that we can rely on to mm -hmm. carry in the late games. And yeah, he showed up. I was also pleasantly surprised by Jack Troll today. Uh, his Thresh in the first two games got banned out afterwards. His Leona <laughs> was he's quite kind of his the Thresh one trick at some yeah. point. So. <laughs> He if he, doesn't show, if he doesn't show a good play on this champion, then I don't know which champion he would do it <laughs> on. So yeah, We'll see. Um, so then it comes to predictions for this one. And I want to turn this into a bit of a 1v1 me, bro. That means Gilius and Cold. You get 30 seconds to tell me why your team is going to win. And I know that Cold is going to go for Fnatic. And that I Gilius, of course, <laughs> is going to go for Vitality. I pretty much have the easiest job in my life. To say why uh, oh, yeah. Fnatic is going to win. I think we're going to get... A clock up on <coughs> is in just a second. So are you ready, Cold? I'm going to ring the bell, and then you get 30 seconds to tell me why Fnatic is going to win. Yeah. All right, three, two, one. So for me, this is the easiest uh, set segment of the day. Um, there's one guy on Fnatic that I think will carry the game. His name is Reckless, and he's not on the other side. So for me, it's super easy that if, the ga if Vitality doesn't get an early lead, then I think there's just no way out of it. So. It's going to be easy, 3-0 for Fnatic. There we go. The time left as well. <laughs> well. Basically, you just said Reckless. So yeah, I guess <laughs> keeping it simple is just saying I Reckless. I don't have to say much more. <laughs> well, we'll see if that comes through. Gilius, uh, are you prepared? Do you want to tell us uh, why yeah. Vitality is going yeah, to Yeah, sure. All right. <coughs> so, three, two, one. All right. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I think in, in this matchup, Fnatic versus Vitality, the big difference is that one team has Gilius in the jungle and one team has Broxa. Um, I think the, the early pressure that Gilius is going to put into this game is going to overwhelm Fnatic. They will be pushed in in three lanes. And um, we have seen us destroying them in the early game. In the two games we faced them, we will um, make our mid and late game better, our play around Nash, and we will 3-0 them. All righty, with four seconds left on the clock. So it was very much about Reckless for Cold. It was very much about the jungle matchup from Gilius. The Fischo, who do you think won that argument? I think uh, Gilius' delivery was pretty spot on mm -hmm. right there. He got me slightly convinced. And you can't really argue with the facts. There's only Gilius on one team, but also only Reckless on one team. So That's true. I'm in the middle. I'm taking the Caps prediction. 3-3 three, three three, is what's going to be. <laughs> and then uh, we just see whatever. We just roll the dice or something and roll see where he gets to. Actually, uh, it's going to be a special moment for Reckless. Like, he's going to get his MVP award uh, before he goes into the third place match in Copenhagen. <laughs> so it's going to be like. Uh, it happened before. So yeah, it's, it's true. brutal, man. Just like that last is, year. That is brutal. Of course, we all know how tough it was for Reckless to uh, in summer for him. So, But it's going to be up to them to 
prove you wrong, I guess, and it's going to be up to you guys to shut up the haters. It wasn't nice today to just kind of shut up these two haters and, and shut up everyone on oh. Twitter. I, I wish we would have done it in a more convincing fashion. 3-0, just sweep them, um, laugh in yeah. your faces. But now I just, I don't really feel like we proved anything, so I'm looking forward to prove something next week. I think anyone who predicted five games, either way, ended up being the winner. Mm -hmm. Wait, you did that as well? Yeah, also five games. Oh, yeah, I, I don't did that as well. For H2K. But yeah. still, it was five games. <laughs> All righty, so let's take a look at the big plays from this weekend. We had five games today, three games yesterday, so a lot of big plays to pick from. Let's see which ones you guys sent in, brought to you by Acer Predator. Now, first up, after struggling in the spring split, Niski really stepped up in our first quarterfinal. His cast it in, in game one versus Rocket was, as at Kikis 1205 said it, disgusting. Uh, anyone, someone may cast it in sounds. Uh, <laughs> Whatever he says. <laughs> Hit him with a sword. Yeah, something. The series was really... Yeah. There was some crazy <laughs> like outplay yeah. right there. Crazy. Crazy did you, outplay. Did you watch that outplay. We probably could have picked a few team fights where he uh, killed some people. I, I think a couple of things are, are going wrong. But the fact was, Niski, he kicked ass on that cast and yes, Splice find himself in the semifinals. So let's move on to our next big play from tonight's dramatic series. We had our eyes on the rookies, and one that stepped up was Vitality Support, Jack Troll. Let's check out this game-changing thresh hook in game one. And uh, let's, uh, we can comment on it, actually. Does anyone want to do the play-by-play? -play? Oh, this and was the one the where he walks forward. There he goes. He lands he the hook. It. The black he shield, it. he still goes in, and he pulls in mini troop packs, and he makes the play. Also important to note, he had Man. another big one later in this one, where mm -hmm. he also caught Sherry. I feel like this is just a Gilius highlight of how to use the trample pillar. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Talia really rolling in on her stone Did and you practice it the trundle uh, E in, uh, in some mode? You can yeah, yeah, yeah. I practice it a lot, actually. It's a, it's a hard one to hit, yeah. So, yeah. I wanted to ask you this. Was this all just a ruse? You went on Twitter and you were like, oh, Trundle Jungle, what the hell, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But you had been practicing it for forever? I, I had been practicing it, and I just thought it's it's funny if I just <laughs> act like it's it's a troll pick. <laughs> and then, yeah, I, I told the guy in, com in the comments, I'm going to pick it tomorrow. Yes. It's like, OK. Someone found it. That was actually hilarious. Yeah. All right. Well, one other big play from today, H2K and Shook, they were looking to bounce back after losing game one. And the veteran jungler Shook, he put the team oh, on no, his back. Can't show this as he secured Gilles a here. monumental <laughs> Baron steal. Let's go. All right, let me see it. All righty. Commentary from Gilius I hate these 50 50. Isn't the call here to just back away? Only just yeah. if he stays in. But look at this psychopath, man. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? He knew he could take the 50 50, baby. But I respect this. This is some fucking balls, man. Mm hmm. I felt like he had he had the mental itch around the Baron today. He did. Did Maybe you feel yeah. the problem same? was Gilius knew this would actually make Shook so confident that in game three, when it came down to it, Shook would go for another one of these plays, and then it backfired. He took the Baron, won the game, and that ended up being huge. But on, on the one we just showed, I didn't even have my finger on Smite. Oh. It seems like you were going away. Even. Yeah, I don't know. And I the call was clearly to back I away. I just didn't want the 50 50. But he forced it, so yeah. <laughs> I should have probably clicked my. That's your team's fault for sure. Suzuki right? actually kept hitting it, know. and he shouldn't have kept hitting it. Yeah, well, yeah I mean, it's always that's that's <laughs> what's interesting for me at least uh, around the uh, the barren area, especially because I feel like if you set yourself up to give the opponent a 50-50 smite, then something must have went wrong yeah. in the setup, and then it's then it's obviously going to come down to like the jungler being clutched in the in the 50-50, uh, but. What is more important is to look back and see what you the mistakes you did in the setup, and I think you missed some some of the wards you didn't sweep correctly, and that that is probably what is important for Vitality looking forward uh, for the semifinal well, to make sure you do the right setup. It's like in this game we lost a lot of patience because like Camille started to hit the inner tower mm -hmm. and Cabo was mm -hmm. getting stressed out in the bot lane, and then we just had to force something, so we thought just force Nash. 
So, yeah, and then we just banned Camille the rest of the series. Yeah, <laughs> no problem there. Just yeah. ban it away. Cool. Well, let's take a look at what's in store next week. G2 versus Flies, our first semifinal on Friday, followed by Fnatic versus Vitality the day after. The first game will start on Friday at 6 p.m., and the first game on Saturday will start at 5 p.m. Um, no matter what happened, unfortunately, Rocket and HK are out, but I am personally very happy with the setup of these semifinals. It looks like it's the most competitive matchups we could have gotten. Yeah, and I think just generally, like, four teams who's been fighting for the top spots all split long ends up then facing each other here in the playoffs. So I don't think it, it actually could be any more exciting. Also, no matter what happens in a third place or final game, I think we're going to have a su super hype matchup uh, between these four teams, and that's going to be pretty crazy. Yeah, and all these four teams will be in Copenhagen, be it to fight on Saturday for the third place match or to fight in the finals for the cup, which is what everyone is, uh, is going for. Yeah, I mean... I would, I would have loved to have played in Copenhagen, obviously, myself. I think this could have been... And the analyst Yeah, you get to be on the desk You're with Fragen. You're still there. Best. You're still but there. F as a player, especially, I think, for a guy like Gilius as well, this is just a huge opportunity to play in front of so many people. And I've I've done it before. I know it, the, the, it's like the best feeling ever, go mm. walking on that stage and people cheer for you. So, slightly jealous, but... Yeah. Also, you get to play in a country with probably the most beautiful fans ever. Mm -hmm. uh, that is another probably great also honor. one of the best countries in the world. I've Probably the greatest country in the world. So mm -hmm. the fact you get to travel there as a pro player, you get to experience the city, the people, the venue, that's a unique experience. Like, I think a lot of players around the world are very jealous of the fact that Gilius gets to play in Denmark. Mm -hmm. Gilius. Um, the, the third place match is actually pretty impactful because the winner goes to Rift Rivals, right? Oh, yeah. Maybe. I think so. so it's One, two, three. <laughs> he might be onto something yeah, here. Yeah, he might be onto something. So Plus, the points worth. for Worlds could also be important. Yes, yeah. well, that's what yeah. we're always thinking about as well. So it you might should probably not start preparing for that match. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, you should is. prepare for it regardless, <laughs> because I said you will be playing in front of thousands and thousands of players, and you don't just want to feed on stage. But as said, possibly for Rift Rivals, also for the end of the year, because I imagine, even though it seems far away now, Worlds is definitely a goal yeah. for Vitality. So, uh, Surely, yeah. We'll see. And I feel like every single year we have at least one team going, you know, by actually getting a lot of points in spring. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, they add up with the summer one. Yep. So spring sport always ends up meaning more than a lot of the people Think. actually expect. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, we've done our part in hyping up the third place match. And over in the NALCS, their first quarterfinal between Team Liquid and Cloud9 has yeah. already started. So if you missed, uh, actually jump over to twitch.tv slash Riot Games if you want to see that. And 3 0 next Team Liquid. Week, excuse me? 3 0 Team Liquid. 3 0 Team Liquid, according to the FISHO. He just spoiled it all for you. But that's no for way, us. Dude. <laughs> Time for us to sign off here from Berlin. It's been a long day. It's been some amazing games. Meet us back here for the semifinals next week. Have a great night. Skip some steps there. You don't want to take the chance again. Wait, he's going for it. Baron wants to run it down. Can he get it? Killing. This is your chance for redemption. Who's going to get it? The end? Who's going to get the spot? Killing. Brings it home. Ah! Oh, goodbye, me. True Pact. Coming in. Vitality. Bringing it back. Spinny J is just so tanky. Decimating Spinny J. Oh, baby. Three steps is exactly what they need. Sheriff is knocked back. He's still alive. Triple for Katsay. And that's an ace. The Quadra, baby. Super scrapes. Bring it up. Play it loud. 22 minutes, 50 seconds, shortest game. H2K with a beautiful win.
Hey, 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 hey,